eh, maybe I should have left this in the part one. A lot of you guys are saying, H.C. Bailey, he just kind of goes like, Duh! and that's it, he died. Kind of anticlimactic. You gotta melt, you gotta dissolve the final boss. And he dies. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's nothing grand or spectacular or anything. How can you not do that to a JRPG final boss? Come on! Oh, whatever. Windfish, is that you? Oh, oh, it's a Zenith Dragon. Oh, now you decide to show up when all the hard work is done. Just like a blister. Or Luigi. Yeah, we kind of met you before. We were the ones who saved the world. But, uh, thanks for helping us out. As, uh, hell was freezing over, I guess. Or something or other like that. I condemn you to oblivion! And no one will ever use that secret again. And your mustache. Holy cow, that's a pretty good mustache. Not as good as Yang's from the after years, but you take what you can get. Sounds like a plan. Get to be in heaven with all the elf girls and... Huh? Oh, I want to go back to my beloved peasant village that's destroyed now. Fellowship of the Ring? No. No, just an ordinary fellowship. I wonder how they chose these three to stay with me here. I mean, it just seems like they picked three of my comrades at random and just left them with me here, and the other four go somewhere else. I don't know. Didn't you guys kind of create us? I, I thought that's how it worked. I mean, I'm not an expert on this kind of theology, but I don't know. That's what I thought. We got the Sword of Miracles, but... Well, come on! Let me pass! Let me get out of here! I'm just gonna zoom out of here if you don't mind, or... Oh, that's... You can't block every way out of here. I'll just jump over the balcony. And heaven and hell. Sure, why not? Thanks for leaving the nectar behind. Although he kind of got killed off immediately after that, but still... Put us on the right path. The Crystal Chronicles? No. no. The Ordinary Chronicles. Yeah, really. I remember when I first played this game, it was like, man, you know, it's, I, kinda, I almost kind of feel sorry for him because, like, he was being manipulated by Aman, and he was the one who was really behind all this and everything, and we had no choice but to kill Sorrow and everything. It's like, man. If only there were a way we could have saved him. But too late now. Well, you were with us for, like, five minutes. But... They've shut all the doors! How am I supposed to get out of here? No, no, that's totally not true. Pay no attention to those rumors. You're still going to die. No, no, just kidding. You'll be fine. Well, I did get killed off in the final battle, but, uh, well, fortunately, Carol brought me back. Man, if that happened in the NES version, holy cow. I would have been screwed. So you can only control solo there. Hey, Mom. How's it going? Save the world. Lofty Heights, huh? Remember that for later, viewers. Not this game. That's another game. What do you mean, your solo? Okay. I'm pretty sure she's Mom. I mean... Whatever. Well, you certainly don't fuck. Hey, hey, all right. There's a door they left wide open for us. Okay, let's head on back to the world and talk to everyone. Now, unlike, well, the first three Dragon Warrior games, you can't just go back to any town you want during the ending. Uh, you walk around Zenithia and everything, but... 
that's pretty much it as far as walking around and actually interacting with the ending. But still, it's better than nothing, like most RPGs do during their endings. I'll take what I can get. Boy, that whole castle can fly, huh? Well, what do we need a hot air balloon for if we got a flying castle? Holy cow. And I love the ending theme to this game, too. That, that's one thing with Dragon Quest IV that's kind of weird. It wasn't like Radiant Historia that knocked my socks off at, in, like, the first hour. I mean, this game, it gave me enough to go on in the early chapters, and it just kept on gradually building and building and building, and the whole experience was just magnificent for me. But that's what I really like about this game, because most RPGs, they can't pull that off. Usually they take forever to introduce any sort of real compelling problems, or the bad guys, or the characters are really damned annoying, or God knows what else. I mean, I mean, this game does it really, really well, I think. Which is kind of surprising, considering, I mean, it was an NES game back in the day, but, uh, well, we got the people from the village back to repopulate the castle now, and, or we could just, uh, I don't know. I don't think they ever explained what happened there. I guess he just came back to life after we defeated Sorrow. <laughs> Elaine is just sitting in bed like, ah, Save the world, and now I'm confined to my bedroom again. <laughs> well, don't we have cell phones? And you could talk to all your friends that way. We got a hot air balloon. Who's going to keep the hot air balloon anyway? Torneco? I'm not going to give him a, my hot air balloon. I like the balloon. I'd prefer to have a phoenix like the last game, but, well, you take what you can get. Yeah, this series has some pretty weird uh, flying vehicles besides airships, but, uh, well, we'll get to that soon enough, viewers, soon enough. But anyway, gotta drop off Ragnar. You get to go back to your uh, standard pay, which is very little. You don't get to become king or something like all the other JRPGs? Apparently not. Yep, save the world, all in today's work. I guess I can have any woman I want in the village. Or the castle, whatever. But anyway. Aw, oh, man. So much for Rose. If only there were a way we could have saved her, too. But too late for that now. I like how they actually use the world map for the ending here, where they show you actually going around the world to drop everyone off, instead of just, like, flashing from one place to the next, you know? I like how they do the medley for this, uh, for the ending, too. Like, they have Torneco's theme here and everything like that. It really reminds me, I will dare say, right up there with the ending to Final Fantasy VI. I will, I will dare say that with the music and seeing all the characters and what the characters are doing after the ending and everything like that. It's amazing. I really like that myself. Yeah, I mean, the music and everything, it's right up there in my book. Where, which town are we going to drop them off at? Maya and Mina. Okay, their hometown, I guess. Even though we started in laissez-faire, but yeah. Oh, you're not going to stick around here? They even have Sorrow's theme here. Remember when we were in, uh, uh, Rose's Tower, or whatever you want to call it, or Rose's Tower, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, Rose's Tower is Cecil's Tower. No, that's the other game I'm playing at the moment. Yeah, shake it! Well, she gets to be a strip club dancer. Why is Mina on stage there, anyway? To make Maya look better by comparison? Well, she's doing a good job. I guess she likes being a strip club dancer, Maya. Now we got Solo's theme here. I, I suppose I could have pointed out everyone's theme. I think everyone's theme music, or world map theme, is somewhere in the medley, if I recall correctly. I forget exactly. Uh, we passed by Lakanaba. 
Now we already dropped him off, or Terneko off anyway. He doesn't live there anyway. Might as well check out back home. Hey, uh, Zenith Dragon, could you uh, help me out here? I, I did kind of save the world for you, since you couldn't do the job yourself. What's going on? Can it be? Oh, what a cop-out ending. <laughs> Yay! She's alive, after all, somehow. Oh, yeah. Give me some sugar, baby. Is uh, Eliza like an elf or something? She's got the pointy ears and everything going for her. Let's watch the credits roll. Like I said, many times... Many, many times throughout the ending. This is probably my favorite game in the series that I've played so far. I've only played the first six so far. And yes, I know, I gotta get around to Dragon Quest Eight. A lot of people have been telling me about that one, but so far from the ones I've played, I've, this is my personal favorite one. The thing I, re and I'm really impressed with the graphics for this game. Um, I'm gonna be pretty generous with this review too. Because, I mean, I'm giving the graphics a 10 out of 10. I mean. What else can you want on the DS? I mean, you got the 3D polygons on both screens, which is really hard to do. Like, I heard, like, the DS was really designed to only do the 3D on the one screen, but to do them on both uh, takes, you had to do some, like, really tricky or clever programming or something with that. I don't know what they did, but... So... But yeah, I'm really impressed with how they did that. Not just the 3D effects and everything like that, but you got the camera rotation and everything. That is so huge to me. I mean, that's like the thing that really sets this game apart from like most other RPGs on handhelds. They, they just don't do that. Or if they do, it's, you know, very minimal to it. You can't just, you don't have so much freedom as you do in Dragon Quest IV. So, I mean, that's one thing I really like about it. I, I like the anime art style and everything of the game, so, and the, the transformations, even in, like, the NES version, you'll see with, uh, Sorrow there, it's pretty impressive stuff in, in my book. And for the music, easily a 10 out of 10, easily, I mean, just all the world map themes, the battle theme, you could, ch I forgot if I mentioned this, but if you change the leader of your party uh, in Chapter 5, once you've gotten everyone, if you change the... Or, no, I think you can do this anytime in Chapter 5. When you change the leader, it will change the world map theme. But I always had Solo there, so... And if you notice, when I had Maya and Mina at the lead, uh, you got their battle theme even still in Chapter 5. So, yeah, I like how they did that. That's a really nice touch uh, to add to the game. And, uh, of course, I love the ending theme, all the dungeon themes and everything like that. The only thing that I could really give a knock on the game for is, like, there wasn't any unique Final Dungeon theme, and I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the boss theme or the final boss theme, but there's so many other great tracks. I, I can overlook that and still give it a 10 out of 10 easily. So, but that's the thing with, like, most Dragon Quest games. I just don't care for their final boss theme. It's just so slow and ominous, and I suppose that kind of makes sense for, uh, you know, a final boss. You want it to be dark and ominous and everything like that, but I don't know. I just prefer them to be more fast and upbeat and adventurous, like Dragon Warrior 3 did. Now, that was awesome. And for the plot, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. I really liked the plot, how it introduced some problems for us to solve early in the game, and they did a really good job of creating an impending sense of doom without... Uh, introducing the real villain, which is really hard to do. So, and I liked all the characters and how the story progressed and how it all came together at the end. It was beautiful. The only thing I really knock on it and why I only give it a 9 out of 10 is the characters not really so developed, but a lot of that is because, well, it was originally an NES game and they didn't have the party talk feature in the, in the, in the English version of the DS game because that was originally in the uh, Japanese version, but they cut it out because it was like 20,000 or something lines of text to translate. But they have that in the Dragon Quest V and VI, so that's nice. 
finally, for the battle mechanics, easily a 10 out of 10. It's just so well balanced. You got your buffs, your debuffs. Uh, equipment isn't just purely based on raw defense or special abilities and properties to equipment, so you want to take that into account. Weapons do stuff. You got your tanking. Uh, I said buffs and debuffs and everything like that. Your, your healing. Almost every spell is useful. It's just amazing. I love how they did that. That's one thing that I really love about the Dragon Quest games, that, that there's just so much that's useful and it's very well balanced and everything like that. And I love the fixed job classes. I love how you just learn the spells as you level up, as opposed to like having to buy them or take 10 or 15 minutes distributing whatever ridiculous ability point system you've got or something that takes forever. Now I heard like, I know Dragon Quest IX did something like that, where you level up, you get some ability points or something like that. But even that isn't that bad because they only give you a few of them. So overall, I give the game a 10 out of 10. I mean, it's just, it's a thoroughly enjoyable experience for me from beginning to end. So I don't know, maybe I'm just getting a little too generous with my reviews lately, but I've been re reviewing a lot of my favorite games recently. So, but anyway, let's uh, save our clear data. Might as well. Well, all right, there we go. Do I just press the A button or the start button? Hmm. I guess it just kind of freezes here. Huh. Well, let's reset and uh, well, let's take a look at our clear data. Why not? But anyway, we... What the? Chapter 6? What happened to 5? There weren't 6 chapters in the NES version. Well, if you're playing the DS version, we have a new 6th chapter to the game. Uh, Post-game content. Some of the best that I've ever seen in a game, but that's not really saying much, because I don't really care for post-game content in general. But this game does a really good job of it. But before we move on to that, I want to show you defeating the final boss in the NES version of the game. Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Screw it. You guys can wait a day or two for Chapter 6. But can we defeat Necrosaro without the aid of buffs and debuffs? Find out next time on Let's Play Dragon Warrior 4! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!